welcome everybody, John the Net Guy. And you're looking at the Black Friday Special 5 Monitor Showcase. Now, there are five different gaming monitors in here. I was barely able to squeeze them into my little area here. And there's some people playing down there on one of these, doing some donuts around me. Uh, you're seeing me here on the YouTube right now. Amazon's not quite live yet, so just letting you know that I'm going to give you a little pre-show invitation here. You're going to see some stuff a lot. I'm going to do this a lot when I'm talking about Amazon. If you're on watching this, if you hit that first link at the top of the description, get over the Amazon, you can follow me there and we can shop along together. But before I let the Amazon folks in, I wanted to let you know that, that we are streaming to three different services here. Hey, Nitro. Hey, Zach. Thank you for showing up. Uh, I'm going to check the pin. I have to see. I've got a message over top of. Zach's full comment there. And top of the chat, it's taking me to a blank Amazon page. Ooh, ooh. No, that's not good. Well, if you go over to that URL there, if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy, you'll see me going live here in just a second there. And I just wanted to point out that I'm going to say that over and over again. Uh, but today is the five monitor showcase. I'm going to pull up the screen and then we're going to get the Amazon folks in here as well. And if you want to chat with me and use the carousel and all that stuff, if you want to buy any of the products on YouTube or Facebook, you can look at the description and the links to each of the products there as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and do that switch over and we're going to let the Amazon folks in. Bring up the title screen. Three, two, one. And welcome everybody. Hey, this is on the net guy we are doing a live black friday five gaming monitor showcase now there's a lot of cool tech in this room i've got three 27 inch gaming monitors behind me i've got two of the 24 inch class gaming monitors in front of me i've got specialty hardware and tools that we're going to use to break these monitors down and they're excellent excellent deals today just wanted to remind you if you're on amazon Go ahead and use the chat here. I'm going to say hello in the chat. Hello, everyone. Yay. Just to kick it off so you guys can see there. So I'm chatting with you guys there. And I'm going to pull up the first product in here. And it's going to be Acer Nitro 24 inch. Right now, this monitor is 199. This is the one here I've got my Xbox uh, Series plugged into. So I just wanted to show that to you here. Uh, I'm going to put this monitor down below so we can really dig into this one. And we'll go from there. Just a couple housekeeping reminders as we get started here. Uh, it was a big turkey day for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, I just wanted to share a couple funny pictures. This was my first smoked turkey Thanksgiving. We got a new smoker and it turned out awesome. And uh, yeah, I don't know if your turkey lays flat at the beach like mine does, but that was kind of a cool thing that we did. Let me know how many people you had. Did you do a prime rib or did you do a turkey? You know, share, share with the uh, chat here there, how your turkey day has been going so far and have you scored any Black Friday deals? You know, have you got any good deals on Black Friday stuff? I'm just going to go quickly through the showcase here and just tell you what we've got coming up. I'm going to start with the 24, go to the 25, and then I'm going to work my way up to the 27, and then I'm going to go up, uh, you know, to the Scepter. That one just showed up yesterday, uh, day before yesterday. Thanks. The results are phenomenal. So I just want you to stay around for that Scepter 27. It's also on a Black Friday special. Uh, I think that might actually be my new creators slash gamers monitor. And I'll tell you why when we get to that one, but it's really cool. As I reminded you guys, free karma upgrade if you follow the net guy on Amazon here. And you're going to get reminders every time I go live. I got a really cool show coming up tomorrow that I wanted to tell you about. We're going to build this gaming PC that you see right here. So this PC uh, right here is in a, is a Moose Tex Muse Tex case. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's got a massive millimeter front fan and comes with three other RGB fans and I was able to make a complete gaming system out of it for $500 so that was a really cool deal 
that's tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So if you do the follow, you're going to be able to do that. And uh, Nitro says you follow. Thank you so much. If you do follow me on Amazon, I'm going to give you a shout out uh, right now. You know, every time I see somebody, I'm going to shout you out on Amazon. I really do appreciate that. A couple other housekeeping instructions. Let's make it fun. You know, this is Amazon Live. This is YouTube Live. This is a live show. You guys are friends. I'm a tech nerd. Um, if I don't know something, I'll know how to find out about it. If I do know about it, I can go through it. And a guy just totally rear-ended us. we got to be careful uh, doing these live shows. You know? um, I'm going to show you something here and how the monitors work and tell you about some interesting things about them. But if you do have questions, go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, sad that the 38 isn't on sale. Ooh, Andrew, sorry about that. Yeah, we, could, we can take a look at that. So again, uh, ask each other questions. I can see you guys are already doing that in the chat. Um, that makes it really cool. If you have one of these monitors, maybe you've had it longer than I have. Um, three of these are personally owned monitors and Scepter was gracious enough to send me the other two for the demo. So I own three of these that I purchased myself. So, you know, I, I was uh, interested in them that much that I bought them. But if you've got one of them, Go ahead and, and shout it out in the chat. Brag about it. Uh, audio is a tad choppy. Let me turn down the gain on that. And let me move the pack over. Thank you so much for that. Our new wireless audio setup. And if not, we can actually move to the second uh, audio. So let me know if that cleaned up the audio a little bit. Okay. Second thing, again, as a reminder, if you can follow the net guy, that would be awesome. It helps me get up the Amazon levels. If I can do Saturday shows with Amazon, that would be really cool. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, if I get to the next level, they'll actually help advertise me. I got to do my own advertising right now. And so that's the, the A list I'll get on if I can get there. And hey, the wife can get a cruise. <laughs> that's one of the things she's always wanted to go on. And, uh, you know, we could take her on one. Hopefully I do make a very, very small commission off of all these. Uh, Commander Stadith, uh, you're asking about the descriptions and what you're looking at. These are going to be all gaming monitors. These are all high refresh rate gaming monitors. I'm going to go over what each one of them is, and I'll tell you about that. So great question. Thanks, Zach. Uh, audio sounds better, it sounds like, by moving the pack over. And then the last thing is save. It's Black Friday. Two of these monitors I know are on a Black Friday sale right now, the Scepter monitors. So the one Scepter monitor is on sale until December 1st, and then the other one is on sale just today for another, I think, another 12 hours or 9 hours. So we'll go take a look at that. But if you want one of the Scepter monitors, they're on a, a pretty significant discount today. Uh, actually, I think the Scepter is the cheapest of the 27s, and from the tests and the specs, it's one of the highest rated 27s, I would say. So if you want that one, that one's definitely an awesome uh, deal for Black Friday. Let's talk about gaming monitors real quick. I've got Forza Horizon here, and I've got my, my Boss 302 Mustang. You know, how many people don't want to just burn out donuts in a, in a Mustang here? Uh, of course, I'm in the dirt, so I can't do donuts here. But, you know, one of the things you'll notice about high refresh rate monitors, you're seeing a little bit of lag there because of the camera work, it is the high refresh rate. That's the thing that separates these gaming monitors from everything else, is that they're not like a normal... 30 or 60 hertz spreadsheet monitor you're going to be going at 144 165 hertz on some and they even make ones out to 240 hertz and that means that 144 times a second you're getting a new frame so if somebody's moving around a corner if you're on a 60 hertz that's a frame i think every 16 milliseconds roughly if you've gone 165 hertz i think that goes down to six so you've got about a 10 millisecond advantage a hundredth of a second which in some of these first-person shooter competitive games is the difference. And so you know, the gaming monitors can definitely help. 240 hertz is a little bit beyond that. So that's one of the things that separates these guys is that high refresh rate. The next thing that you got to look out for is when you get into that higher refresh rate, a lot of these panels, they're just simple mechanisms or barn doors, these LCDs that are turning on and off. And they'll start to have a problem called ghosting or blur that you'll see. That either the image will start to blur or you're going to see a, a ghost of the image of the frame or two before. And it can be really annoying, actually. So that's one of the things you want to check out is look out for ghosting here. Hey, Margaret Temple, thank you so much for the follow. This is John the Net Guy. Uh, Margaret just followed. <laughs> Uh, that was awesome. You might see a follow button up in one of these corners or down below. Thank you so much, Margaret, for that follow. And so ghosting and blur is something else you're going to want to take a look at. One of the monitors I'm going to show you today, almost no ghosting. 
it was surprising. I just put a video out about it. Very, very, very impressive. This one has some ghosting at high refresh rates, and we'll talk about what that is, and I'll show you how you can test that. So that's pretty cool. And then the last thing we want to talk about is G-Sync and FreeSync support. All of the monitors today support FreeSync, and a few of them... <laughs> Margaret, that's a family account. Nice. <laughs> hey, Andrew. No problem. Thanks for sharing. Uh, so, you know, all of these have FreeSync support. Some of them have G-Sync support listed. I think G-Sync has some licensing, so that's why not all of them say G-Sync. I haven't found one that doesn't do G-Sync compatibility. I think there was some, some costs associated with that that you had to do. So, first up, I'm going to tell you about the Acer. This is the Acer 24. This is uh, one of the gaming monitors that I started out with. Really cool gaming monitor, and it is actually curved. Let me show you what that looks like on the side here. It's a little bit easier to see. So the, the bottom of this monitor, and actually, it's kind of tough to see. <laughs> the, this monitor is not flat. You see the top edge here, how it bends? There's a what they call a 1500R curve. So that's the radius of a circle of 1500. If you were to draw it out, that's what this curvature is. So it's a pretty mild curve. You know, 1500R, when you get to bigger monitors, you know, you can definitely st start to see it. It's not obnoxious, but if you're used to doing spreadsheets on a flat monitor or creative stuff like that, that can be a little bit different. So I prefer curves when you get up into the 32. 32 or bigger, I almost have to have a curved monitor to really use them, uh, especially for gaming. But in the lower 24, I was amazed that they had this capability. And the other thing was the brightness on this one. So this one says that it's HDR 400 certified and it does have HDR modes and that can be really cool. When I tested the, the max brightness, I only got 222 nits of brightness. So it's kind of a give and take. And when you see some of the other monitors like the Scepter that's down below here that they got 370, it's just night and day difference next to each other. And most of these monitors individually are gonna look really good when you get them. And, you know, 300 nits is, is more than enough for anybody, I should say. <laughs> but when you have 400, 420, 500 nits of brightness like a MacBook, it's really nice. It, it can make the experience much better. So generally an all-around good monitor. I'm going to jump over to Amazon, show you the Amazon listing on this one. And at the same time, I'm going to show you guys how you can see this. So if we come over here, give me one second. Oh, it doesn't want to do that. Sorry about that. I need to duplicate my display so you can see this. So I'm going to jump over to my Amazon page. If you do that URL that's at the top, the amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy, you're going to get to this page. And I have taken all of the monitors and I've put them in an idea list for you. So if you come down here and you click on the Black Friday five monitors, you're going to see all of the monitors that I'm showing you today. And we're going to start with the first one. And this is the Atro, Acer Nitro that we talked about. It's a full HD monitor. So it's that 1920 by 1080. And when I was talking about some of the other things that we were talking about, FreeSync. So this is in that, that little de demo that they have there. That's that little tiny jagged line in the middle. Um, that's going to keep it from tearing. So when you get tearing on a monitor, that's when the computer is running at a different speed than the monitor refresh rate, you get a tear. With the variable refresh rate support of FreeSync, the monitor and the computer are in tune with each other, which is really awesome. And again, if you guys have any questions about this, just let me know. This monitor right now is on sale for $50 off, so it's $199, which is a good deal for this monitor. If you want to get a curved monitor, if that's the experience you're looking for, and this is that high refresh rate they're talking about, I don't, I don't know if I would agree with this image. I've seen some better <laughs> ones here, but the 144 hertz is going to be not necessarily a clearer picture, but it's going to be a faster picture. So you're going to see things maybe a few milliseconds early. I've got some cool stuff we'll talk about with input lag as well. So, um, you know, they have all of these different things. This is that curve I was telling you about, the 1500R. There's 1800R. There's 1000R, which can be really aggressive. So they have many different radius curves, and this one just happens to be a 1500R as well. And they're claiming the, the display HDR 400 standard, which gives you that really, really high, you know, white brightness and the really dark blacks, which is really cool. A uh, couple good games for that. If you like Doom Eternal, that was one of my favorite games in HDR and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The, both of those, if you have one of these HDR supporting monitors, that's really cool. 
So if that's something that's important to you, the Acer has that HDR support. The next one I'm going to show you doesn't have that. So that's kind of the, the trade-off you make there. So if you have any questions about this, we'll take a look. The, even though it says AMD FreeSync, it most likely supports variable sync or G-Sync. Is that true? Yes. Almost all of these, I still have yet to come across one that doesn't actually support the uh, other technology. If it says that it has FreeSync, or in this case, FreeSync Premium, you'll see a lot of that said. I don't know, uh, you know, the big exact differences on those but they normally have G-Sync support as well in there. So that is the Acer. Let's go through a couple things that I really like about this one that I want. I have to point this out real quick. The stand on this thing is amazing. So you've got height adjustment support here. You've got a swivel on the base of the stand, and I'm going to try to do it without knocking it off here. So there's a swivel down there. That's going to move around. So you can uh, do that. And then you've got tilt. So completely adjustable in several directions. There's one other direction that, that you, they can adjust in that doesn't, that I'll show you in another stand. But one of my favorite stands, and this stand is exactly the same between the two Acers I'm going to show you today. And it's part of the reason I bought the Big Brother, is I love the stand so much. All of the ones today are Visa mountable, meaning that if you wanted to use a monitor arm, I've actually got monitor arms holding my cameras and stuff. So if you wanted to do that, um, you could go to the back here. I'll show you that one more time. And you could actually unscrew it here, uh, or sorry, this one pops off with a, a button. And you could actually screw a monitor attachment here and use a monitor arm, a gas strip monitor arm. I've got some videos on my channel about that. I really do like those. Hey, Commander, thanks for the follow, man. I said I would call everybody out that's following. So thank you so much for following on here. Uh, Visa, yes, it is Visa mountable. That's the term. There's Several different standards. There's Visa, I think 75 and 100, and most of them are, are one or the other in most of the stands you get. Actually, I can't grab it, but I have a Visa plate there. I could show you uh, if I could reach that. But this is the Acer. Let's go back over here real quick, make sure I told you everything correctly about it. I'm going to do that real quick. And if you have questions about these, absolutely you know, shoot them out in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them. So this is that Acer that we talked about. The stand, one of the best things, doesn't have uh, RGB on it. So if RGB is important to you, several other ones here have RGB. If that's really important to you, then you know I would recommend that. The other thing I'm going to show you, and this is kind of cool, is that ghosting. So this one did have a slight issue with ghosting. And I'm going to share my screen again here so you guys can see it. So this is the UFO test, they call it. <laughs> and it's kind of cool because it actually will allow you to see a lot of these blurs and ghostings and other things that can get in the way. And when you go in down here, ghosting and pursuit camera. Now this is going to get you dizzy, so I'm going to switch off of it here in a second. But this is at 60 hertz, and what it'll do is it'll show you that stuttering that happens on some of these monitors. So I'm going to go off of that so nobody gets dizzy. But... That's the UFO test. Uh, very easy to Google. It actually does let you test these high refresh rate monitors and you can see visually any smearing or ghosting. I actually have one in my recent review that I did. Uh, I also put it out on Twitter that you know showed the difference between the, the next monitor, the Scepter, and this monitor and the, the lack, complete lack of ghosting in one versus the other. Um, that's a great question of BGR or whatever. Is this the reverse one? <laughs> I don't have those stats. That's one stat. I've got a full stat sheet on all the monitors here. That's one stat I didn't look up. And that what you're actually asking about there for everybody that's wondering, um, there's RGB and that's the, the actual doors on the LCD. And then there's BGR. I guess one was easier to manufacture, but text doesn't look as crisp. So I guess it's when the green and the red or something aren't next to each other. I don't know that stat. That would be really cool. And that's how you guys can help each other. If somebody else uh, knows, it's interesting. I don't know if on the, the BGR, that's one really good question. If somebody else in the chat knows, you can go ahead and answer that for our friend here, Commander. So thank you guys so much for that. Let's go back to our presentation. And I'm going to pull up that. If you have any more questions about this monitor, just let me know and we'll go from there. So this again was the Acer XE2 the 24 inch curved monitor. This is a great entry level 24 gaming monitor. So that's awesome. <laughs> Text is important for sure. Oh, you're doing uh, crypto trading. 
Wow. Okay. I, I did see some, some jumps in the stock market went down. I don't know if crypto goes up, uh, you know, opposite of it. So um, one other test I'm going to show you here, a piece of equipment that I have today, and it's something brand new. I'm not discounting or counting any monitors based on the test results of this test today. I'm just going to tell you that, that outright. But I actually have this cool little tool here I'm going to show you. See if I can get it on the camera over here. <laughs> This tool right here is a lag tester that's hooked up to a Raspberry Pi. It's a mini computer. And what it is, it's a little photodiode that checks to see when the monitor has shifted from a picture to another picture. These things are moving, again, milliseconds, six milliseconds, seven milliseconds. They're going so fast that as they shift... Sometimes there's a lag between your keystrokes and what's shown on the screen, especially if they have a lot of computation uh, in addition. So I'm going to show you this. If I can plug it into the right HDMI port. Now this one, again, has one display port, two HDMI ports if you want to use them. And it should switch over if I get this right. So I'm switched over to the other input. Let's see if we get that one up here. See if I got that right. Make sure that's connected. And we might have to do this on the next monitor. <laughs> so this again is a, a, an input test. There it is. Okay. So you may not be able to see this super well, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this photo diode in the corner. Now this thing is really cool. So what it's doing now I got to get it to stick. That's the other important caveat here. What it's doing is it's measuring the time. That little red line that you see there is when the monitor starts to switch. So here it's saying that the first time it's drawing is six milliseconds. So six milliseconds after the computer told it to switch, the monitor switching. The red line is when it's increasing in brightness. And the next number, the yellow, is the full brightness when it's actually made it. So this one you know, in my testing, it was about 12.5. It's showing about 11 milliseconds. And that's going to be important when we talk about the next monitor because this input lag test, that's going to be important. Um, so a lot of gamers, you'll buy a really nice gaming monitor. If it has higher than normal input lag, that means that you're, you're hitting the buttons, but your screen's not reacting as fast, if that makes sense. Or you get killed and you're like, I didn't even see the guy. Well, it's because the game's ahead of your, what you're displaying. So... That is a really cool tester that I'm using now on my uh, monitors. So I just wanted to show you that. And so we, we captured that input latency. I'll take some of these out of our way. And when we go to the other monitors that are uh, more for creators, I'm going to show you the results from the Data Color Spider. That's a monitor analyzer. And that can be really useful if you're going to be a creator, if you want to both calibrate your monitor and... Oh, very nice, Zach. The sub-pixel rendering on the Acer is RGB, according to Artings. So we are RGB. Good to know. Um, so yeah, the Data Color Spider, I'm going to pull that out and do it when we get to the more advanced monitors. So that's the first monitor down. Next monitor up is going to be the Scepter 25. Now, if you follow my channel, I did just release a full-blown review video on this one. It kind of... it. It's a monitor with a foot in both camps. <laughs> it has some really amazing features and then some features that I prefer in better in other ones. The mo monitor stand being one of the lackluster features of it. <laughs> so the stand has tilt and swivel just because it's a little loose, uh, but that's about it. It does have the inputs back here. You can see those. It actually has four inputs. So it's got more inputs than the last one. If you've got more devices that you're going to be plugging in, like a lag checker, <laughs> or like in this case, I'm going to plug my Xbox back into it. So you can plug an Xbox in here and be careful on these uh, inputs because they can actually matter. See, without a monitor that tilts or has a stand that adjusts, sometimes it can be kind of hard to plug these in. So if you're plugging things in pretty constantly, that can be tough. Hey, did you see that? <laughs> it's got RGB. And if you're hearing that, I don't know if I get close, it has speakers. So that's another big thing. One thing I love about this monitor, there's no ghosting at all. And the speakers are quite loud right now, so I turn those down. 
one of the things I wrote is uh, above 50%, it's about the same volume, but they do get quite loud. So I just turned the volume down on that one. And the picture is going to be a little different than what you see on these cameras. This one's got a little bit higher contrast, it looks like. I haven't gone through and adjusted these. But again, uh, I wouldn't use the picture that you're seeing here to tell you anything about the monitor itself. But I'll talk through this monitor. So what makes this monitor special from Scepter is that it's not an IPS panel. That's some of the ones behind me. It's not a VA panel, which is the one we just looked at and the center one behind me. It's a TN panel, which was one of the oldest monitor technologies out there. You know, traditional new LCDs that came out as for twisted pneumatic. So it's a very old monitor technology, but one of the things that it does in that UFO test, it's rock solid at the highest refresh rate. So at 165 Hertz, I took a high speed camera to it and it's showing exactly the edges defined of the item you're looking at, no ghosting or smearing. So that was really cool. This one is on special right now. So I'm saying that this is probably the most excellent value of a monitor if you're looking for the best price for a gaming monitor. No ghosting at all. It has a peak brightness. It claims that it's 300 nits. When I did my testing, it came out at 370 and 380. So super bright, which is nice if you're, you know, working in a bright area or a bright room. If you're in a dark room, it doesn't matter as much. So that was really cool. Does have those extra inputs that I talked about, which is nice. It is a flat monitor. So some of these are curved, some of these are flat. At the 24, 25 inch range, I don't mind a flat monitor. They're not wide enough. But if you're going to do, let's say, three of these, so I've got my monitor stretched across three here, so my logo is stretching. You could get three of these for under $600 right now and put them on monitor arms and come up with a really nice wraparound display for simulation, things like that. So that's from the Scepter company. It does have a gray to gray of one millisecond. So the switching time is gray to gray. You'll see MPRT and GTG. It has a one millisecond switching time, which is really good uh, in there. And that's going to make it so that the, the you know, picture stays on the screen longer. Some other IPS panels and other ones, if they don't have that, you know, if they say five milliseconds, the max they could do is 200 hertz because they're always switching. So you want to see that, that uh, time. Looking here to the chat. If you wear progressive lessons, will a uh, curved monitor allow for more in-focus? fantastic question and great point there so a curved monitor we, we just showed that picture earlier that it has the equal distance if you're older and your eyes and your you know don't focus as quickly or as well having a continuous distance especially on a 32 or larger monitor is a great way uh, to just you know lower eye strain all of these monitors have blue light shift um, you know they have those eye strain capabilities in them which is awesome so that's another thing to think about but great question there so if you're working on that now, progressive lens, curved monitor, I don't know if progressives up to bottom to top on there on the lenses, they have the weighted lenses, but yeah, from a uh, usability perspective, I definitely like that. So let's go look at the Amazon page real quick for that. And again, just as I was telling you how you guys do this, if you go visit the net guy and we go over here. If you visit that URL at the top, amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy, and you go down here, you'll see all these monitors. This is the cheapest monitor of the entire showcase. One of the highest brightness levels. We talked about ghosting being really important uh, to avoid that. Almost no ghosting. It's got free sync premium capability. Uh, just as many input, uh, inputs as the maximum inputs we're going to see today on a monitor. And it's on sale, I think, until December 1st for $179.97 there, as you can see. So if you're not happy with it, the other thing I like about buying from Amazon, let's say you have a dead pixel. Let's say you have an issue with the monitor. You can always return it. They have free returns on this. And that's something you're not going to get at many other retailers. Uh, so definitely something to think about. So this is the Amazon page for the Scepter. There's a little bit of the stats on it. Let's talk about color. That's a whole other interesting thing is... I did an analysis with my data color spider on this. That's where I found out that the brightness is actually even higher than the, they quote on this one. But another thing that we'll talk about when we get into these larger monitors, the more expensive monitors, is the sRGB color. So your TV, your regular TV movies, have an sRGB color spectrum or range, if you think of like a rainbow. But there's actually deeper and more colors 
that are available for print media. So when you print it out, you might see a little bit of a difference in color. This one actually does have 106% of the RGB coverage, which is about 95%. So it's very similar to the other Acer. Um, you're gonna, when you watch movies and other stuff, you're not gonna miss anything at all, let's put it that way. Some creators monitors for myself, if I'm doing some color grading on some footage, I'm gonna need that real rich deep color or the super high brightness, the HDR. So when we look at these other monitors, I'll talk about that. So that's the Scepter monitor here. I wanted to show you two of the inputs on it. So it does have speakers. That's something that's interesting. A few of these do. This is one of them that has speakers and they're actually as loud, if not louder than all the rest of them here. So they get really loud. They also have an audio input for your headphones right on the monitor, which can be convenient. Interestingly enough, almost all of these use an audio out on the headphone, but they don't have a microphone. So, uh, Andrew's looking here, super ultra wide. <laughs> if you're allergic to bezels. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting one. There's some really cool monitors out there. I'd love to do an ultra wide showcase some days if you guys like that. So again, a uh, new model here, it's a decent looking monitor. It's super duper light. You guys see, I'm just one handed. I can carry it here. It does have a retention clip. I'm going to come over back to full here. It does have a retention clip on the back for all of your cords. So cable management's not too hard with this. You can run your cords up and through. And, you know, again, if you're going to keep the stock stand, you can use that. I would recommend upgrading the stand on this one. Um, look for a, a monitor arm. I've got some other showcases of monitor arms that look great. So just keeping an eye out for questions. <laughs> oh yeah, the Scepter, the big boy, 43-inch Ultra. That's a, that's a great monitor. So this is the Scepter. I'm going to move along to the next one here. Uh, we're going to start to get into the bigger monitors. These are the 27s. Um, and we're going to start off the 27s with the Acer version. So if you have questions about any of these, let me know. Uh, one thing about this monitor, and again, I'm not scoring any of the monitors on this yet. The input latency on this one came back at about 30. So if your other one is 12.5, this one's about 30. That's 18 milliseconds. That's several frames. That's up to three frames of your game that you might have missed. So I'm going to continue to, to work on those tests, but I did want to point that out. So it does have an input latency. And again, these are not certified numbers yet. I'm still working this out, but it has an input latency slightly higher than some of the other ones. So the first one I'm going to pick up is this Acer over here. And I'm going to get that actually the stats up here so you can see what we're talking about. Get those on screen. And if you have questions about any of these, absolutely feel free to share them. So the next up is the Acer XV2 Nitro. And this is one that I use myself. Okay. Couple really interesting things while I'm hooking it up. You can see how tall that monitor gets on the stand here. And I can bring it all the way down almost to the desktop, all the way up here has that same swivel bottom that we talked about that I really like also has tilt adjustment. So when you go to hook these back connectors up, which I'm going to do, you can raise it all the way up and I can tilt it all the way forward here to make it easy for myself. I'm going to do it from the back here. And then when we look at the bottom, you can see it has a display port and two HDMI's. So yeah, the Andrew says, gotta love the stock stand. So this is an Acer. Uh, different again than the scepter that we were just looking at, but I really love this stand. Um, if you're not going to buy a monitor arm, really, really high quality stance. Now, <laughs> scepter is not going to be outdone here. When you see the final monitor today and what its stand can do, you are going to be amazed as I was. So I was really, really happy about that. Give me one second. I'm just grabbing a power connector here. <laughs> And make sure I get the right one that's not in use and unplug something. This uses traditional conventional wall plugs. So this is a regular computer power plug. So you don't have a power brick. If you're concerned about, you know, aesthetics and looks, you don't have a big power brick to hide with this one. It's got the FreeSync Premium we talked about earlier. It's flat. So it's a flat one. It's got speakers, as you can hear in here. I'm going to go down to audio. So this is the on-screen display. And then I can go over and mute the speakers. There we go. The OSD menu of the Acers is really good. Uh, the MSI is probably a little bit better and it has another really cool feature, which I want to show you in a second. 
Um, but this has got a really good on-screen display. When I say OSD, that's what I mean. Um, it's got buttons along the back here to turn it on. One of the things I really like to see them now in this, this class of monitor is joysticks. So this is a little joystick that they have on the bottom of the monitor. And you can use that to adjust the um, settings. So this right here is your joystick. And then this one also has a physical on-off button. So some of the other ones require you to, you know, do one or the other. Really, really good color out of this one. That was one of the things that I really liked out of this monitor. And I don't know if you can tell on the, <laughs> the display, because again, the, the cameras do all sorts of tricks here. But the color is incredibly accurate. It did come in at 337 nits of brightness. So still very bright. Let's get out of here. Let's go do some Halo Infinite. I don't know if you guys have seen this game yet, but um, I'm not very good at it. I <laughs> just put that out there. But no, a very interesting, you know, new release game. But, you know, if you go through here, you know, the monitor has rich dark blacks. You can see the blackness on the, there. And it is HDR certified. So the Scepter that I just showed you was not HDR certified. So your games aren't going to be able to do that really high brightness to really dark shadows. Whereas this one does have the HDR mode and capability. So DisplayPort versus HDMI difference. Uh, I bet you somebody in the chat can go into the details and maybe the Wikipedias on that. Uh, DisplayPort is the newer technology. HDMI is more traditional with televisions. And there's different HDMI standards. There's 1.4, there's 2.0, 2.1. Um, there's also different display port standards, but a display port you're going to find on most newer graphics cards, whereas the old ones will have DVI and maybe HDMI. So display port's kind of the newer technology and the newest one, this one actually has a USB-C connector on the MSI. I'll show you that too. It's really kind of cool. So a lot of new monitor standards coming out. This is where I'm going to show you guys, you know, why color matters. So I do a monitor test here. And what this allows me to do is I can plug this monitor in and I can use my tester and I can verify the color. Hey, West Rituals, thank you for joining. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, if you want to join on the Amazon side here, you see that up here, that shop, the neck guy, you can actually chat with me on the Amazon chat. And I can actually show you, oh, I have to click my carousel links, don't I? <laughs> I can actually show you in the carousel these different monitors. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use my spider utility here, my data color spider elite. And I'm going to do a duplicate monitor. And what this data color spider does is it's going to validate that everything that the monitor claims is true. So here's the unit. I'm going to pull it up on the side camera here. Give you guys a new camera to look at. <laughs> So it's got a big eyeball and that eyeball is going to be checking the monitor for calibration. If you are a photographer, this is a must purchase item. This data color spider X, you can get the pro or this is happens to be the elite. I have both. The elite is good for monitor analysis. If you're doing monitor testing, like I am, you'll want one of these. Uh, but this one will allow us to verify the color accuracy, verify some of the other claims. So this monitor, I was telling you guys earlier, I was actually using this personally in editing my YouTube videos. So when I needed to edit a video, I was plugging this monitor in and using it with my iMac because it had the, the high brightness and it had the color accuracy that we want. So we'll do a live test real quick here. Have any of these come in at one millisecond as advertised? It seems like nobody does. Um, and that's a great question. So when we talk about uh, response time, that was what the question was. The one millisecond gray to gray or one millisecond MPRT motion picture response time. Uh, those are often inflated numbers. Let's put it that way. The input lag is really important. And as you saw that red shift on the input lag tester, which we'll do again on another monitor, um, that input lag, that can actually show you the draw time of the frame because that little photodiode starts to see the frame rise and then it sees it stop and then it sees it shift. So that measurement is good. So I haven't done that, but that test tool I have will actually monitor that. So I'm going to share my screen out here so that you can see it on this. I apologize. You won't be able to see the actual test just because I have to have it going to the display. This is going to shift over, hopefully, to HDMI to the second input. 
There's my net guy. I'm going to go to duplicate for my monitor so you guys can see exactly what I have up. And then I'm going to use the shortcut here to do a display analysis. Now, a couple things I'm going to do is I'm going to do color accuracy. And then I'm going to do, let's see, I'll start with color accuracy first. That's a really good test. And I can pull up some of the other tests for you when we're done. So first thing I do is I take my data color spider and I put it on the monitor here. Now, there's a lot of things when you're doing this. You don't have bright studio lights. That's one thing. So the numbers that we see here, I'm not going <laughs> to count. Um, you generally try not to have bright studio lights around. And you can use this to calibrate a monitor. So even if a monitor is way off on its you know, actual colors, you can bring them back pretty quickly with this. So it's going to show the sensor a series of colors. You're going to see it flash here. It's going to look like red, green, blue. That was a little more purple on the screen. <laughs> So it's going through 12 primary colors. When I do my tests, I go up to 48 different colors. And it's going to say if that color that it put out or told it to put out was exactly what it, it should have been. So it's asking me to save the results of our test, which I will do. So here you go. And this is one of the claims to fame of this monitor. I'm going to just switch it over here so that you guys can see it. And I'm going to make it bigger for you. But this value that, that came out of it is called a delta E. And not to bore you guys with the non-scientific nature of this test here, but the delta E value is how close those were to the colors. Anything below two, you can't tell. Um, that's really, really accurate color. Um, anything, you know, below four is generally pretty good. You know, somebody's not going to notice that. If you get seven, eight or above, you know, six, anything in the higher range, Somebody's going to go, that's not red. I know that that's not red anymore. So just wanted to point that out. So that was this one. I'm going to go back to full here for a second. And I'm going to pull up the report for this monitor and let you guys see it because I've actually done all the testing for all these. So this is the Acer 27 inch. And like I said, this is the one I used for creating YouTube content um, as well as you know editing you know videos and i did a commercial just recently for a client so i did client work with this but i want to show you that real quick here i'm gonna turn that off bring this up so what you're seeing right here in the center is the srgb coverage it's this triangle and this monitor has 100 percent of that 95 percent of the p3 and then the adobe rgb is one of the widest um, so it has really good the brightness and contrast levels i said it was 337 and that's what it is and it's a thousand to one contrast ratio. So again, those tests, what I'm doing there for you as I'm verifying whatever the monitor says and claims to have, um, that it's actually doing it. Now this Acer is special because it does have a, a less than two Delta E. Now I did have to return one of these to Amazon, full disclosure, I, I bought two of them and one of them came out at 200 nits brightness. So it was almost half as bright and you wouldn't have known it in, if you didn't have the testing equipment, it was still okay. And the, the colors were way off. And these are calibrated from the factory. So if you're a content creator that also games, this monitor right here, and I'm going to pull that up, the Acer 27, could be a really, really good option for you. So uh, best color accuracy when you see Delta E of less than two, that's what it is. No RGB on it, and there's no USB connectivity. That's some of the drawbacks of this one. Uh, this is John the Net Guy, by the way. We're on Amazon Live and YouTube and Facebook. If you're on one of the non-Amazon services, go ahead and hit the follow and or go to the website here and you can see us live on Amazon. You can chat with me. I've got the, the chat up here on my phone. <laughs> and you can ask me questions about these, but we're testing five gaming monitors today and I'm about to switch over to the last two. So I just want to give you guys a heads up of what those are. Um, this monitor, I'm going to pull it up in the carousel, is $247.99. It says deal of the day right now. It's 17% off. It's a solid monitor. Uh, I'll tell you that. I, I've used this for a long time. Until I got this scepter that's behind me, I haven't found one that had all the things that this monitor has for, for content creators that also game. So that was one thing I want to point out here. Uh, let's go to the next one here. The next monitor that's going to come up is an interesting monitor. I did a full one hour, I think an hour and a half live stream on this. It's from MSI, and it was one of the first monitors that I had actually evaluated from MSI. 
and it's from their optics line which is kind of their upgraded i wouldn't say it's like lexus and toyota but their optics line is a, a very nice monitor line i'm going to put this back here and hook it up and let you see here so the monitor in the center is the one that i'm going to pull up next i'm just hooking so you'll be able to see it and it's going to readjust now that it found that okay here we go so this next monitor like i said from msi this has some really cool features uh, i won't lie this is a really solid monitor there are some things that that i like about it and some things they could obviously improve upon um, one of the things that i really like about it is also its stand so you know this is the monitor itself it does have that height adjustment and it has the highest height adjustment of all of them so again standard doesn't have pivot but it has up down tilt uh swivel no it you're going to turn this it has this tripod design which a lot of them have especially the scepters i actually broke a monitor uh, it was a long time ago <laughs> and i talked to scepter about it i said hey you had this this tripod wing design and I had it on a little tiny stand and one of the corners of the leg kind of moved and then it just slipped all the way off. Dynamically unstable is what I would call it. So some of these, just be careful if you've got kids that maybe beat things up a little. This one does have rubber pads to help it be non-slip. But um, this stand does not turn unless you physically turn it. So that's something. Um, it's pretty easy to mount. It is Visa mountable. I'm going to switch over to this camera while we're here. Um, you mind commenting on and off topic monitor when you're done with another one? Let's uh, hold questions to the end if we can, Commander, and I will absolutely answer any questions you have. I do just want to cover these because some people are interested in specific models, but I will absolutely answer all your questions and I'll stick around for you. So I'm going to raise this all the way up. I'm looking underneath and I'm going to attach the HDMI input. Okay. Now this one uses a traditional power plug so i'm putting a traditional power plug into it and that can be convenient too so when your monitor doesn't use a power brick like i said hey instantly we got some cool feature here we got rgb across the back here now i don't remember if this one's controllable in the osd if you can change it i know that in the uh, the scepter 24 it is not adjustable you can just turn it on and off but there we go Pull my screen up here and get back out to full so you guys can see this. The rare achievement, medic. Okay, so obviously playing the game here. Monitor is up to 1440p resolution. Um, very good gaming monitor, I would say. The color accuracy on this one, not as sharp as some of the ones we're going to see today. But it does have a curve. So there's a curve to this monitor. If I go back out to the side, you'll see it maybe on the top again it kind of arches and at a 27 the curve is kind of nice to have i'll tell you that's 32 it's almost a must to me 27 it's a convenient uh, feature at that point it is 165 hertz va panel so the reason the colors aren't quite as accurate is because it's not an ips panel which is what the last acer one was so can you calibrate this one for better saturation Saturation's kind of funny. So saturation is the level of color, um, you know, if something looks washed out or whatnot. You can calibrate for all of those. Uh, and some can be brought back in if you're a delta E of four or three. If you're at seven or eight, sometimes they may or may not be able to calibrate back in exactly. So I'd highly recommend a calibrator if you were a photographer. If you're a gamer, I'd skip right by it. <laughs> if your primary use is gaming, unless somebody points out that this thing is way off, which most of them are not way off, um, that would be good. This one tested out at 294 nits brightness. So it's not the brightest of them. And you can see when I put them together and I crank them all up, this one lags behind in brightness. But what it makes up for in convenience features is just really cool. Um, I like it. It has a built-in USB 3 hub. And <laughs> I have a friend that doesn't buy into the whole hub and a monitor idea. I happen to be one of those guys that loves a hub and a monitor. I'm running out of USB ports everywhere. So it's got a USB 3 hub in the monitor. So it's got one connection up to your monitor. You can put flash drives in. You don't have to have your computer available to you. You can be under a desk and you can just plug it into the, the bottom of the monitor here, just like a, another port. 
that's really cool uh, capability. This is one of the few that does not have speakers at all in it. So when I plug this in and I make noise, there's no, no speakers. Now, most of you guys have a, either like myself, this was hiding my sound bar that I use back here when I'm playing. I have a sound bar. I like the, the rich sound. Or you're using gaming headphones. So speakers won't matter to a lot of people. It does have on the rear input, this is again the MSI 27, one of the best OSD interfaces that it has. So it's got a button joystick right here. On the front, when I switch it around here, and it's hard to see these, I apologize, but it's got this extra button over here, all the way there. That's a programmable macro button. <laughs> so if you wanted to do something cool and you have it plugged in USB or not, you can plug that into maybe to change gaming mode. It has crosshairs. Let's, let's do our quick first poll here. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody on the Amazon chat or anybody in the YouTube, uh, how many people think crosshairs are cheating? So this one does have a crosshair ability. It's actually available right here on the uh, OSD. So when using this joystick, I can actually change modes. I can do all that stuff. And, oh, I can turn a false crosshair on in the middle of it. So now you see that little red. I'm going to have to turn it over here so you can see. See that little red crosshair in the middle? Is that cheating? <laughs> that is not generated by the computer. That is input by the gaming monitor. And, and in a lot of gaming monitors, you'll see those kind of features of doing crosshairs. So let me know in the chat if that is cheating. But it's it's available via hotkey. I just pushed down. Like I said, this has got one of the best built-in um, on-screen displays there. So that's the MSI that we're looking at. A couple other things that I want to tell you about on it. When you plug the USB 3.0 in, and I'm having trouble turning off those crosshairs. I might just have to keep them. But uh, <laughs> when you plug the USB in on this, it will actually allow you to do an on-screen display. I got it off. It'll allow you to do an on-screen display app on your computer. So if you don't like you know, futzing with buttons and clicking on things, you can actually open the app on your computer, control all the settings on the monitor, the presets, anything about that right from the OSD, the on-screen display. Power button is physical power button with a LED up front here. So this is the MSI monitor. I'm going to do one more test on it for you guys. And this is something I showed you earlier, which was that input lag tester. Because this is another thing. This is, out of all of the gaming monitors today, it's probably one of the most gaming representative monitors. Let's see here what people were saying about that. <laughs> Oh, depends if the crosshair lines up with my ship's targeting or trailing reticle. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I don't know if that, you know, you're following the, uh, the people there, if that's what we're asking about. <laughs> okay, just double checking here and making sure everything's connected. It's switching inputs, and we're going to take a look. This is that input lag checker. So what I was saying is, if you're the kind of person that's on an Xbox and you're constantly getting uh, hit, you know, and going down, uh, let me click on the one we're looking at here this is the most expensive of them if you're one of those people that just always feels like you're behind in the game it might be input lag and if you're playing on a television you could see a hundred milliseconds of latency on here i'm going to put the input lag checker on the corner here again this is just a photo diode and what it's doing it's seeing when and how long it takes for that monitor to shift now i might be able to zoom in on this a little bit here See if I can do that for you. It'll let me. So that red area is when it's seeing the monitor shift. So it sees a 5% increase in brightness. And the closer I get this to the monitor, the, the more aggressive it'll be. Um, but you can see there the number 10 milliseconds, 8 milliseconds, 9 milliseconds. Depending on the modes, and I just reset all of these before we started using them. Uh, but if you go into the gaming modes and you turn overdrive on, you turn us, this thing came in as low as six milliseconds. So it's one of the fastest and lowest input lag monitors that are all out there. So that's a really, really cool thing. I had the previous gen of the MSI 27 and loved it. Couldn't recommend it enough and <laughs> had gone ultra. Uh, if I had gone 49 inch ultra wide, I'd be rocking two of them. That was from Zach. And that's absolutely true. Um, this is one of my favorites, and it's got the silly things. Like I said, the USB hub. I'll show you another one that I didn't even know about, and this is kind of embarrassing. I review monitors. I didn't know about it until after I had done all my videos. <laughs> Check this out. See that little button? 
it is a pop-out headphone holder. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, back over here on the wall, I've got a variety of gaming headsets, and there's never a good place to put your gaming headset. So right now, you just set it on the side of your monitor when you're done with your gaming session. And so that's the MSI. Like I said, if you are going to be seriously gaming, you maybe do some content creation here and there. You don't need super brightness. Um, I believe this one has HDR. It says HDR ready, but the brightness of only 300 is not quite enough to give you that separation. But I did notice in the stats that HDR ready. So I just pulled that up on the carousel. Um, how come it's set at 720? Fantastic question. Now, like I said, I'm not scoring these things scientifically here. I'm just showing you how the tester works in a quad HD monitor. And actually one of my testing associates here, I'm going to, he noticed this. I'm going to pull this up for you. See that little line in the corner, the four in the four in a quad HD monitor that's running at 1440 P. 720 is pixel perfect one quarter. So every pixel is quadrupled. There's four pixels turned on and off. So that number four line will be perfectly straight. There's not any jaggies in there. It's not like split. If I went and did a 1080p signal on the same monitor, you'll actually see what it's going to have to do to make this work is it's going to have to split those pixels. Kind of technical, but think of just like a wire mesh and if everything fits through that mesh, it goes in perfectly. But if the source and the screen are not native, it's going to have to make that up. It's going to have to choose. So 720, um, the reason I did that testing is it's pixel perfect to the lines of the monitor. If I get a newer tester, I think I can go up higher and do the full 2560. So 2560 by 1440 is the max uh, re resolution on these monitors, the 27s across the board here. This one, it doesn't have like the deep, deep color that the next one's going to have, but it does have a lot of really cool things going for it. Right now, it's for $299.99. To answer your question, West Rituals, I've looked today at uh, an Acer 24. We looked at the Scepter 25, their new one that came out that's on sale today. That's the cheapest one today. Um, then we looked at the Acer 27. We're on to the MSI. We've got one more monitor coming up and I'm going to show you that one. It's going to be kind of our finale here, but um, a couple other things about this one. The joystick is really convenient to have the on-screen display app. Silly things like the headphone holder are really cool. If you don't want to go out and spend extra money, it does have one of the tallest stands today that we're going to look at. So that's just a few things after that. And again, if you guys have any questions about these monitors, uh, even if you think they're silly, go ahead and ask them because, you know, we are all working together here. So this is the MSI. This is a curved monitor. And the last one I'm bringing up is the new Scepter. Okay, so this one just arrived to me. Now, I'm going to skip forward to it and give you kind of the rundown on it. Yeah, the monitor joystick isn't something I knew I needed until now. <laughs> yeah, you won't buy a monitor without one. Great point. Yeah, these monitor joysticks for the OSDs are really convenient. I'm going to bring this monitor out. Let's start at the back of this one, because there's a lot going on here on this guy. And I just wanted to show you that right away. Plugged it in. We'll go over to camera two like we've always been going. Direct inputs, straight direct inputs. Now, why is that important? If you're like me doing a show all the time, now you're, you're tired of looking underneath to try to find out how to get your monitor plugged in. This is super convenient. So if I want to put my input checker in, I can go over here and I can put that as HDMI too. If I want to go take that Xbox that we had and I want to plug that guy in, I can put that in HDMI one. <laughs> So now I'm all plugged in and I'm running and I'm going to town here. So there you go. Makes it super easy. Now I got to show you the, the flagship feature that I thought this stand, this stand is just awesome. So we talked about vertical adjustment. So almost to your desk, I think it's like four and a half inch travel tilt. Follow me here, guys. Pivot. <laughs> so if it's up at the highest mode, you can pivot it. If you're a software engineer like I am during the day, uh, you can write code. If you do emails, mortgages, documents, things like that, you can rotate your screen vertically. 
A lot of people do two verticals, one 32 in the center. Completely adjustable stand, and this has got pivot, so it's got tilt, side to side tilt, a few degrees. <laughs> it's got swivel, um, a pivot, and height adjustment. So probably one of the most versatile stands out there. The other thing is I noticed that there was these little tiny indentations on the side. It actually has support for a monitor hood. If you're like a competitive gamer, you can actually hook up a monitor hood that goes around this. I'm going to pull up the Amazon page. So I'm pulling up the Amazon page right now for this. And one of the cool things is this is a Black Friday special. <laughs> it's on sale right now. Um, it is the 27 inch scepter. It is $219 it is the cheapest of the 27s that I've shown you. It has all the capabilities of the other ones and some of the best stats that I've seen. So I'm going to quickly pull up this input lag checker. We're going to test that. I am testing at 720p as we talked about, and I need to zoom it out. Okay. There you go. You can see the, the frame rise and fall there. Um, so depending on if we can get a good test sample out of this, and we may not. So it's showing about 15 to 17. So it's half of the other scepter, and it's right in line uh, with a lot of the, the mid-level monitors here that we've been looking at. So about 15, I've seen it down. I've got it down at 14 here. The fastest of all of them is really that MSI back there. It is the most gaming of the monitors out here. But for a full redraw, and I'm not counting just when it starts to turn from an input lag, which may count, but from a full draw, that's the input lag that we're looking at. And don't compare these input lag numbers to like Artings and other ones because the way these checkers work is different. But relative to each other, you know, this one is not the fastest, but it's close to the uh, other Acer in the pack. Yeah, and it's faster than the other Scepter. The other cool thing about this is a handle. You know, I'm, I'm hucking monitors around here back and forth. And, uh, you know, how convenient is it to have a handle for support there on top? So just little things like that that I thought were really neat about it. And so we talked about the, the data color spider. So we're looking again at the, the scepter here. I'm going to pull up one more thing. Pull up some gaming on this. So again, fantastic color on this thing. I'm going to pull up the test results on the color because I think it's something that you're going to want to see. And I was super impressed with this. I actually already told Scepter today, uh, when I saw the results of this, I'm like, did I get this right? Because it blew away the other monitors in the show. And I'll show you that right now. So we did that testing earlier. Let me pull up that display here. We'll go into full screen. Okay, so this is the color gamut. Now they're advertising 135% of the sRGB color space. My tester maxes out at 100 because that's the little green square here. So regular movies. The P3, the DCI P3, that's the blue square here. And the purple square is Adobe RGB. This one has more color than all of the other monitors that we've shown. So if you're a creator like myself, you're going to get colors that are very close to an iMac. You know, all the Macs have these really rich, very expensive IPS displays. This thing's going to achieve that. So that was really cool. The next number that shocked me was the brightness contrast. Now, IPS displays are not known for their blacks. They're not known for contrast, but it's coming in at 1100 on the contrast, which was awesome. And then the brightness here. This is one of the highest brightness ratings I've ever seen. The iMac is the only one I think that's beat that. And this is on a gaming monitor. So just a couple quick things, that's 144 hertz. So it is a high speed monitor, just like everyone else. Um, let's talk about color. Now I have to open that test result real quick. We're gonna go to monitor showcase. Let's go to the color two. So color is less than four. Now this monitor does not advertise itself as a creator's monitor. There's a little bit of shift in some of the, the browns and some of the darker grays, but the other colors are pretty close. And this is the full 48 test. So to the naked eye, normal people aren't going to be able to notice any sort of color shift. It's going to look normal to them. With calibration, this thing would be brought in very easily. That's why I said this may now have just become my new editing monitor because the brightness can reach that of my iMac. So really, really excited about that. It also does have speakers. So that's what you're hearing. If you, you might've heard a little bit of noises there, um, that's in halo that we're just in the demo and it does have RGB on the back. 
So you're looking at the back of this thing here. Let's see. Let me pull it back up. That's even easier. So it's got an RGB ring all the way around it. Uh, you can see that there. No USB control here. And the thing that I don't like, it still continues from the older ones. It has the older OSD, the on-screen display, which is infuriating sometimes. Um, but speaking of that on-screen display, this is one of the few monitors today that actually has picture-in-a-picture -picture support. So you don't see that usually in the 27s. But it actually, I did see in some of the display settings, it has PNP, multi-window PNP. I don't know if that's enabled. Again, I did not test that feature, but I just wanted to say that I saw that in there. Uh, does it matter that this does not have G-Sync? Let's look at that real quick. I want to double check the Amazon page for this Scepter monitor. Give me one second. I'm going to bring that up for us. And I'm going to bring you guys along for that. So let's pull you guys up in here and you can see what I'm looking at. Again, to do any sort of look in here, visit shop or amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy. If you visit that page, you're going to see my show page. And if you want to see any of these monitors, they're in this idea list of Black Friday monitors here. The Scepter just happens to be the one on the right. Again, it, it's as cheap as some of the other monitors here. And this ends in seven hours and 50 minutes. So if you want this, definitely don't miss out on that. I don't want you to miss out on this, this deal. Uh, excellent price on this. I'm going to be talking to Scepter, see if I can <laughs> purchase this one from them so they don't have to ship it back because I really do think this is one of my favorites now. They do have a 32 version. I, do, I can't vouch for the specs on that. Um, let me just double check in here if it's got G-Sync. So it's showing 450 nits brightness. Again, it's, it's right there. If I'd have played with any of the controls, that was 431 out with no overdriving, changing, or anything like that. So... Um, ViewSonic, uh, Juan Felipe, you're asking about the ViewSonic. You know, I'm going to pull that up here in a second once we pass this one up and we can do that. Um, so it looks like if you don't have an NVIDIA card, the GTX, it's not going to matter. That's true. Um, almost all of these support G-Sync in the end. So whether it says if it's got free sync support, that's what I was actually going over here for. Sorry. Um, just looking a little bit on these, it's got FreeSync Premium. Most of them, when they have FreeSync Premium, automatically have G-Sync support. I can't guarantee that. I think there's some, some licensing issues. Another couple things to be real careful of here. You can see the refresh rates, the high-speed refresh rates. When you're plugging things like Xboxes in, and I want to show you that real quick. So I've got my Xbox, and I plugged it into the wrong one here. I'm going to plug it into the correct one now. Um, when you're plugging these things in on the back, make sure that you have them in the right one. And I'm going to show you, if you go on your Xbox menu, and I'm going to zoom this in because I want you guys to be able to see this. Hopefully my camera will do us justice here. And I, hopefully I can do it backwards. <laughs> so we're going to go into here, and I'm going to go into settings. I apologize for the image quality here. And we'll go to TV display settings. So you can set the resolutions here. You can see 1440 is available. And now it's going to change that. Keep refresh rate. So 1440. And then when you go to pick these resolutions and refresh rates, you can go to 120. It may drop it down to um, 1920, it, which it did in this case. So you can go through and look at all of the video modes that it has. This one has that HDR10 with that super high brightness. So that capability is there. It also has the variable refresh rate as well in here so that's really cool it's got the the deep color with the 10-bit and so you've got all those capabilities as well and then you can change any of these settings you can go to the color depth to 30-bit 30-bit is the highest color depth you're going to want it's a long story but there's that so this monitor uh, fantastic whether you've got an xbox or a pc it's got the four inputs which is nice two of those being high speed inputs the other two are locked at 75 so if you got like a work laptop, you come home, you want to do some extra work, you, you plug it in, you can definitely run that on here as well. So uh, this live has a lot of quality. Amazing seems to be recorded. No, Juan Felipe, it is live. <laughs> I do I do thank you for the kind words there. I put a lot of time and uh, investment into this. Um, this is not a curved monitor, so let me pull that up, Juan Felipe, here. You can see on the, the side here, um, it is a straight straight monitor so doesn't bother me too much at the 27 range i i really do like um curved monitors at 32 but 27 i could take it or leave it and my imac is flat and when i do content creation i want it to be represented 
more accurately flat. And so, you know, when I have my iMac and this together, this is the monitor that goes with that. So this is, to me, the star of our show. I can't play favorites all the time, but when Scepter sent this to me and they said, hey, you got to check this thing out, um, it would be a great Black Friday show. I said, okay, let's get it out here. They rush shipped it to me and uh, FedEx came through. This is one of my favorite monitors right now. So let's get it back into some games um, so I can show you that. So we've got a few other games. Some of the games that are really, really cool at high refresh rates are these eSport titles. Now your Xbox Series X is going to be able to do that. Your other uh, monitors, um, your Q, or sorry, your RX 6600 is a full HD card. will get you into the 100 hertz or more club. And so, you know, these games do really, really well here. Like I said, as far as drawbacks, the uh, OSD is a little bit dated here. So if I push this button... I can show we're playing at 1920 by 1080 at 120 hertz right now. So if I wanted to do some, some Rocket League play, I could do that at high speed here. And we could go to play, and I can go to training. I'm going to do free play. I'm just going to show you one here that we can hop into. It's, it's really cool when you're playing at this high refresh rate. Um, just things look glassy. So super cool. And then the IPS color is super duper rich. So like I said, that 135% of sRGB, super deep rich greens here, you can see there. I'm trying to play delayed input. Oh, I got it, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so you guys can see there. If you have any questions that you're on here, let me know. I'm gonna go pull up Juan Felipe's monitor on Amazon. I'm gonna take a look at it real quick, let you know what I think. I have reviewed many ViewSonics, but uh, let me take a look real quick. Okay. Let's see here. So Zachary's saying he's got good luck on compatibility. The Samsung G5. That's a tough one. I uh, hate to give people bad news on that. I ordered a Samsung G5 on Wednesday from another place, and I canceled it because I had looked up some reviews. The G5, and this was, I think, the 32, the same one you're looking at. I think it was a little cheaper than you put in the chat. And it had blur, motion blur bad, like, you know, four or five frames of motion blur. And people were showing you dragging a window across and you could see like five copies of that window as it was going. So uh, I canceled that one. I feel real bad because everything else on paper looks great on the G5. I would go with potentially, you know, the Scepter here. <laughs> um, again, it's got the low input latency with all the other ones. Um, it's got the HDR, the super high brightness. It's got the 144 hertz, 144 to 165. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not 165, it's not 240. They're really, really close. You're talking millisecond differences, you know, single millisecond differences. And you know, in general, I've had 200 and 165 hertz panel. I drop them down to 144 because they run better at that anyway. So great uh, question there. I'm going to jump over to Amazon and I'm going to look up that exact ViewSonic model number that you put in here, just because I want to make sure it's the right one, if I got the chat up still. Okay, we'll do that live. And again, I'm going to sh uh, show you guys where you can find these. This monitor right now is $219, uh, which is an absolute steal for the Scepter monitor there. And the link is in the carousel if you're watching on Amazon. You can't go wrong on these. Um, if for some reason you're unhappy with this, which I can't imagine why, they do have free returns on these. So. That's another thing. And when you buy from Amazon monitors, one, they get that express shipping. When you're on Amazon Prime, most of them that I've run into um, get shipped next day. So, you know, you get them two days of the Amazon shipping. Uh, I haven't had to wait too long for monitors. Okay, I'm just looking up that model number. I see that model number. Uh, I'm going to pull that up on the screen for us right here. And I'm going to take the Scepter logos off because it's not their monitor. So let's see on this one. So Adaptive Sync Eye Care, most all of these have it. This one has it as well. WQHD, the 1440. 165 versus 144. Like I said, it's kind of a push. Um, this one is definitely a curved set, Juan Felipe there. So if that's the one you're interested in, um, you know, if you like that curvature, that's cool. I'd be interested to look at the inputs on the ViewSonic here. So it's got some one display port, two HDMI. Okay, so this is going to have an extra HDMI in on the on the scepter. That's one advantage. And I don't know the nits of brightness and any of the other um, 
M okay, so the MPRT, that's a moving picture response time. I'm going to pull that up for you because I think it's important here. So I got my monitor showcase data and let's go to Blur Busters and we'll go take a look. Hadn't planned on bringing this up to you guys, but um, G to G rate is gray to gray. So on gaming monitors, that's how long it takes to shift. MPRT response time is how long the uh, pixel is continuously visible for. And so the UFO test, if you guys are interested in that, is where a lot of this comes from. So, you know, when you see these kind of things moving, if you focus your eyes on the middle UFO, the background's going to be one. If you focus on the moving UFO, you're going to see a different background, even though it's the same picture. And that's the persistence of vision test that they show. But, you know, when you look at response time and blurring and ghosting, that's something I would really like to see. So this is an Acer Predator, and they're showing you when you have overdrive turned on and off, which is a technique that they use to make the pixels shift faster and get you those faster frame rates, the picture quality goes down immediately. You can see it extreme. It's got this, uh, you know, ghosting behind it. And some of the overdrives can actually have inverse ghosting where it's like trying to get ahead of it. So that can be tough. So, um, you know, from a monitor, I can't say specifically with authority whether this one's better or not than the scepters. I think, you know, you'd, you'd want to look up reviews on that specifically, especially if there's an Amazon Live. And hey, if you Sonic, you want to send me this one to go through the tests, I'd be happy to do a show with you on that. So just looking again for you. Um, it is the same resolution as all of these. Let's go ahead and look for nits. I don't see any rating on brightness. Okay, backlight bleed, that's came out of the first review, was working great, but somebody else writes there. Um, backlight bleed, bleed can be really bad on the edges of some of these, and there's another issue with IPS, which I don't think this one is, uh, which is IPS glow, or pillowing. So in a dark room, so, oh, it doesn't have the great contrast ratio. Now, technically, this is an IPS too, but it, it was at 1100 to 1, which I was amazed about. But yeah, so um, backlight bleed is when the edges may not be... Uh, correct or you get an edge light on the side so you can see that ips glow is the edges of ips's uh can look like a pillow almost and you'll see like a glow in a very very dark room it usually doesn't matter unless you're watching a lot of movies late at night um that can matter so great questions i'm going to bring us back here and we're doing a little wrap up here if you have any other questions on the products that we looked at today let me know can I comment on the LG GL850B27? That's a great one. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to do that for you guys here. We got time. We're going to come up here and I'm going to do... <laughs> I did not done, plan on doing a live show. And again, for Amazon, if they're watching, uh, they like us to have monitors on or products on hand if we're going to cover them in our live show. This is not part of my carousel. This is just me giving some friendly advice if I was shopping for monitors with you. Um, so that's an LG Ultra Gear. Wow. Okay. The price on that one is a little bit higher. Let's pull that up so we can both look at it. So it's 455 if I've got the model right on that. It's 144 free sync USB upstream cables and you get a cleaning cloth. Okay. So um, 1X plasma LCD screen cleaning, HDR support, 144 G Sync certified. Okay. So they did. Uh, pay the money essentially to have the G-Sync certification. I don't know again on the stand. I do personally like USB hubs and monitors. So brightness of 359 nits, not as bright as the Scepter, but again, you know, LG makes some really good sets. We have an LG in our room. Uh, input lag, some of these have game modes, which can be really cool. I see a, a black light stabilizer on there, which can be really good, or black uh, stabilizer. So not a bad one, but you could just about actually buy two of these and have two monitors for the price of that one. So that's another thing. The item weight is also incredible on that one. That's 23.6 pounds. Now, again, I'll have to go to the page here, but this one is 13.4. So that's more than some monitor arms can handle if it's really 23 pounds. If you look at its competitors there, that might just be a misprint because... Its competitors are 13, 15, 13, and so on. So, again, happy to take a look at these with you on Amazon. Um, LG, if you want me to take a look at this Ultra Gear one, that's another one. Um, there are a lot of good sets here, but we have gone through all of our sets here today. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around here and going through them with me. I want to do a couple quick reminders. 
if you do want to purchase any of the monitors that have been shown today on the show, I do get a very small commission if you use the link in the carousel. And just to go through, we talked about two 24 and a 25, which are both great monitors. We talked about three 27s, the Scepter being my favorite of the show today, and it's the cheapest today on Black Friday, 220. Uh, I could get two of these and be really happy as well. So just wanted to point that out. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this, I've actually got a complete PC build. There's a budget build that I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Here's the ad for it. This is that Musetex PC. It's got a 200 millimeter front fan. You get three fans um, that are addressable RGB fans in there. That's live tomorrow morning. Now, how do I find that john well it's pretty easy let me pull this up on my screen here and it's the same way that you find all the other products in the showcase if you visit that url at the top let's bring up my laptop so these are the black friday five monitor specials those are across here this is my list of 500 dollars budget gamer parts so i'm inviting you guys tomorrow 9 a.m to join me on this one 9 a.m pacific time it's a great little budget gamer. It's got a 5600G in it, and it's all parts you can get on Amazon. They were all in stock when I last looked. But the way you can find those, if I'm doing a live, you can go to, and it's kind of backwards, you go to my past live streams, and then you go down, and it has an upcoming live stream right here. So you click on that. Or once I end the show, if I, you know, you go to that site, you can look at that as well. So if you do follow me on there, I really do appreciate it. You're going to get to see this. We're going to have fun building a computer tomorrow. It's going to be about 90 minutes, I think, to build that whole machine. And really good gamer. No GPU. You don't have to get a GPU for this, but it's under $500 right now for all the parts. And when you do get a GPU, it's going to be a rocket ship. It's completely ready for all that. So really excited. I invite you guys to come tomorrow at 9 a.m., to come back and check this out and with that i'm going to check one more time real quick 27 do you think the curve is important no not really no not really i don't look at that and uh thanks zach thanks everybody for hanging out with us today i really had a good time this has been john the net guy and i'll be signing off and i'll see you guys tomorrow saturday 9 a.m for that budget build thank you and i'll catch y'all later